Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of... What's up? I'm Julio Lopez. I'm a certified strength and conditioning specialist, a certified personal trainer, and I've got my master's in nutrition. In addition to that, I'm also a former collegiate rower. So here is what you need to know on how to learn how to row. First things first, the flywheel. Right here, there's a dial that goes from 1 to 10. Just because you're at 1 doesn't mean that it's easier, or that you're at a 10 means that it's a higher intensity. That's basically how much air is allowed into the fan, meaning that more air going into the fan, that the fan's going to be slowing down in between strokes. That doesn't mean that you're going to get a better workout just because you have it at a 10 as opposed to a 1. Really, the intensity of the workout depends on how hard you're pulling. For most people, it's going to be around a 3 to a 5. So when you're setting yourself up, basically you want to sit where the upper leg bone meets the hip bone. You want to sit up nice and tall, making sure that you're not really weighing down on the seat because that's going to be creating a lot more resistance than you want. You're going to slide in both feet where the strap is basically just below the bottom lace of the shoes. You want to pull it until it's taut. doesn't have to be overly tight, just as long as you're secure when you're moving forward and backwards. Gripping the handle, I prefer to do it where the pinky is right here on the edge of the handle. You're going to start off at the finish. Basically, imagine there's a giant clock right here on the mirrors. I'm sitting up nice and tall. I'm leaning back at about an 11 o'clock. The hands between the nipples and the bottom ribs. You'll probably see some advanced rowers where they pull it up towards their necks. Don't worry about that for now. So you're at the finish. The forearms are an extension of the handle. So the elbows are extended outwards. I'm sitting up nice and tall, core super duper tight. You're going to go into what's called the recovery. You're going to extend the arms first, maintaining the lean back of the torso. When the hands are aligned with the knees, that's my cue to hinge the torso forward, keeping the legs straight. I'm not really bending the knees a whole lot more. When the elbows come aligned with the knees, that's my cue to pull myself in through the heels. Think of it like a leg curl. Going forward, you can allow the heel to come up a little bit. You don't necessarily have to keep the heel down the whole time. So allowing the heel to come up, maintaining the forward lean position until the shins are about vertical. This is called the catch. My arms are straight forward. I'm nice and compact, ready to explode back. So what comes next is called the drive. It's the same thing that you just did in the recovery, except it's in reverse order. So instead of starting with the arms first and ending with the legs last, you're starting with the legs first and ending with the arms last. So to demonstrate, so I'm gonna push off with the legs first, maintaining the tall upright position. If you want to look at the monitor, keeping your eyes at the top of the monitor at all times. If you ever notice yourself dipping down below, that's not right. You want to make sure that you keep a tall upright position. Again, pushing back, keeping a tall upright posture, leaning the torso forward. I'm at about a one o'clock is where the forward body lean is. When the elbows are aligned with the knees, that's my cue to start leaning back. The arms are still straight. When the hands are aligned with the knees, that's my cue to pull the hands in. So to demonstrate in normal order, arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms. Again, you don't have to go forward like you're trying to reach for the wheel. Basically, you want to make sure that you're nice and compact, but still extending the arms fully and making sure that you get the sequence of every movement correct. Otherwise, you're going to lose a lot of your leverage. One of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people make is that they don't include the forward body lean and they stay leaning back the entire time. When they do that, they're losing a lot of leverage, meaning they're losing a lot of potential power. So again, 
arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms. If you got any questions, feel free to let me know. Until next time, I'll see you on the next Workout Nerd Out.